in this tip, we're going to talk a little bit more about spherical aberration, and we're going to talk specifically about how to minimize or eliminate spherical aberration in, in the laboratory under the imaging conditions that you're working on. Just to review, spherical aberration, as shown in this figure here, is the uneven focus of light axially from light that passes through the periphery of the lens that focuses closer to the lens, or light that passes through the axis of the lens focusing further away from the lens. Um, spherical aberration, as I had mentioned in the previous lecture, is one of those aberrations that's extremely difficult, in fact impossible, to completely correct for in the manufacture of lenses because the design criteria that we have to use to make lenses don't necessarily match the imaging conditions that you need to use in the laboratory to address the questions of interest. Okay? So, we have this paraxial focus and peripheral focus, and we need to bring those together. So there's uh, a number of ways to address that. Okay? So one can be utilizing um, different refractive index immersion media. So basically what you're doing to correct for spherical aberration, no matter how you do it, is adjusting the optical path length to best fit the um, design uh, criteria of the lens. And we can do that with immersion media, and there are actually kits that you can buy which have many, many different refractive index mer uh, immersion media that vary at the third decimal place, uh, say 1.515, 1.516, 1.517, 1 and so on. And you can look in the specimen at the depth that you need to address a question, say you're looking at the endoplasmic reticulum, and you want to then focus to what looks like it's something that's at the limit of resolution, close to that depth in the cell, and then test different immersion media at that focus depth so that you get the best correction for spherical aberration. And again, the best correction is found when you see focusing through up and down, you have the best symmetry of in and out of focus light. Okay, So you can use this immersion media to correct for spherical aberration, and um, oftentimes uh, that, that uh, works pretty well. Uh, it's a bit tedious and um, can be a little messy as well. Um, uh, the, another thing you can do is uh, to um, go ahead and measure your cover slips to get the, uh, the design criteria of 170 microns thickness of cover slip. You'll use a micrometer to measure them and then throw out ones that are too far outside the uh, criteria that you need to have the proper optical path length. In addition to that, um, you'll also want to go ahead and uh, Ideally, use a lens with a correction collar, which is really the easiest way to correct for spherical aberration. There are limits, though, so you have to understand if you're outside the range that you can correct for, you'll have to go to these other methods. Um, but a correction collar, which was traditionally available for adjustment of cover slip thickness in air and water immersion lenses, is now um, also available in oil immersion lenses. And that's because oil that you use for oil immersion lenses actually has a temperature dependence to its um, refractive index. As it warms up, the refractive index decreases. Okay. So uh, a correction collar actually uh, works by changing the angle of the peripheral rays versus the axial rays in the objective lens. And you can see the objective lens cut away here. Uh, the way a correction collar works is we take the um, the area where you have the steepest angle right here in the front between two lens groups and the ray trace and we take all of the lenses behind that angle say here back we put them in a brass tube we score a groove around that brass tube put a pin in it attach a collar to that and then we fix the other lenses in another brass tube when we turn that collar it moves all of those real lenses back and forth relative to the front lenses and those steep angles there then go like this so that you're adjusting the peripheral rays while the axial rays don't get uh, changed quite as much and that's exactly how a correction collar works um, and then it will bring the paraxial focus which was further away back to the peripheral focus shown here okay so that's basically spherical aberration